Hey guys, Friendly Neighborhood Doc here, and let's talk about this week's comics. Um, but first, I wanted to say, have you guys ever experienced kind of burnout on the superhero books and, and reading about capes and things like that? Because I kind of feel like that's why I'm branching out to more indie publishers and things like Something is Killing the Children, The Autumn Kingdom, things like that. So I kind of feel like I'm moving not necessarily moving on, but moving away from superhero comics exclusively, and I'm giving different things that I might not have tried 10 or 15 years ago a shot. Have you guys ever felt that way? Let me know in the comments, and, and let's get a conversation started about that, because I know that everybody reads something different, but comics, like superhero comics, have been my bread and butter for a long, long, long time, but maybe I'm growing up a little bit and branching out seeing what else is out there. Okay, anyway guys, let's keep moving along and we'll go ahead and start talking about the books I picked up this week. All right, this is gonna be talked about in totality in the initial assessment video that I've got coming up later. But this is Absolute Batman, number one, by Scott Snyder with art by Nick Dragota and Colors by Frank Martin. No, I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to make you wait for the next video. Okay, all right. Next up is Amazing Spider-Man 59, written by Zeb Wells, with art by John Romita Jr. and inks by Scott Hanna. And as you can see on the cover, this has got Tombstone and Spidey Part 2. And it's just an absolute battle between these two. And Spider-Man is trying to save Janice Lincoln from Lonnie Lincoln, a.k.a. Tombstone, her dad. And they just absolutely go at it over and over and over. And it's almost like a horror movie. He finds her, and then Spider-Man shows up to try to save the day. She manages to get away. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Every time that it seems like Spidey has got the upper hand, then Lonnie literally trips him up and keeps going and moving forward and moving ahead. And it is one of the bloodiest, just knockdown, drag out fights that I've ever seen in an ASM comic. It's a it's on the level of. Um, I would say the Morbi, uh, not the Morbius fight, um, the Moreland fight that J.R.J.R. also drew all those years ago. I would say that it's in that same level of just nonstop action. Once it gets going, then it just doesn't let up. But you've also got real violence against Tombstone where Spidey just breaks his hands. and just continues to just lay a beating down on him, unlike anything that Tombstone has ever felt from Spider-Man. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, Spidey does what he always does and saves Tombstone's life, and now it's up to Tombstone to decide whether or not to continue the fight. Really good stuff. I would say that the Tombstone stuff in the first five issues and then somewhat of Gang War... And then now these last few issues with Zeb Wells has been some of the strongest things that Zeb has written on the title. So I know that a lot of life circumstances got in Zeb's way as far as, you know, maybe taking his concentration off and taking his foot off the gas. But these two issues, the last two issues have been really good. And I can't wait for two weeks from now to see how this whole thing ends up wrapping up. So I'm definitely going to say that that was a, a really, really good solid book for this week. Okay, next up we have an even better book, The Autumn Kingdom, Issue 2 by Cullen Bunn with art by Christopher Mitten. Here we still have Summer and Winter, and they are in this fantasy realm that their father, who is a writer, has created and now it's come to life and 
she has found... Let's see, how is that pronounced? Else Thrill <clears throat> has found this sword, and it allows her to damage the shadow creatures that she comes across. And the artwork is just dynamic, jumping off the page, just in your face. And then eventually... She, her sister joins in to the fray, and Winter tosses the uh, blade to Summer, and then they manage to get away, and they find refuge in this house with these two people, and it's a wife and a husband, who are much more than they seem to be. This book, the artwork, the writing, everything is on point as far as this book goes. Um, the story about two daughters trying to find their missing mother and father, it comes out that their mother and father are to be a sacrifice to this kingdom, which we haven't really seen but in bits and pieces. And it's called the Autumn Kingdom. And spoilers, perhaps, so if you don't want to know, or if you're going to read this yourself, then just, you know, go ahead and fast forward for about 10 seconds or, or, or something like that. But the Autumn Kingdom is actually dying. And her mother and father um, have been chosen to be sacrifices in order to keep the Autumn Kingdom alive. So it's like their life forces will keep this kingdom alive because their father's a writer. And imagination, if Green Lantern has taught you nothing else, imagination is one of the most powerful things that you have out there. Um, it can create worlds. It can destroy lives. And it can create anything in between or bring down anything in between. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is acting up today. But this is a really, really strong start for this book, and I hope... I hope that it's not a miniseries. I hope that it's an ongoing because Cullen and Christopher need to have that room to really let this thing breathe and let it grow. It's very much in the same vein as Helen of Windhorn, in my opinion. If you like Helen of Windhorn, then you're going to like this. So if you haven't checked out the first issue, definitely go check your LCS. I bet they still have a copy of it. And then go back and reread both of these at the same time, and you will not be sad. I promise you will love this, and you will want to see issue three immediately, just like I did, to see how this book continues on. So this here, the my Mississippi's coming through, this here is my pick of the week. Um, hands down, the best book that I read this week. Okay, next up is Minor Arcana, issue two from uh, Boom Studios. Jeff Lemire writing and drawing this series. It's talking about the adventures of Teresa, who came back home to care for her mother, who is terminally ill. And in this book, Teresa has what's almost like a dream state. And what happened is, in the last issue... A lady named Jean, J-E-A-N, came to her in a moment of need and wanted to hear from her husband who had passed on. Well, Teresa has always been somewhat skeptical of her mother's abilities and powers to really, you know, give answers to the people that come to her as a medium. But she said, you know what, what the hell, I'll go ahead and do this, uh, you know, seance myself and we'll see if anything actually happens. And so she ends up running into Jean, G-E-N-E, -E, who was the other Jean's, the female Jean's husband. And he's passed on and he's says he's sitting there waiting for her to come so that they can move across to the Twilight Lands forever. He won't go without her. So at the end, he, he says, just let her know, you know, that I'm waiting for her. You got to tell her that she's, that, you know, I'm waiting for her and, and I won't go across without her. So 
all of a sudden she wakes up and she's less than kind to this woman because she's had a tough road to hoe in life. It's It's been very difficult for her, but she's also finding out more about herself. And a lot of people, when they get into that aspect of life, they don't, they don't like digging into their own closets and their own skeletons because it brings up bad thoughts, bad memories. It, it makes them deal with trauma that they have yet to deal with. And that's kind of how Teresa is. Her and her mother are at each other's throats, even though that she knows how sick her mom is. And, you know, finally, her mom says, well, if you hate me and you hate this place so much, why don't you just leave? And she says, maybe I will. So... There's more to that book as well, but I don't like giving away everything, so if you guys haven't checked this out, it's a very strong start by Jeff Lemire. I'm kind of hoping that doesn't mean that Phantom Road from Image got killed, because I thought that was one of his stronger books as well, even though that had Gabriel Walta on the artwork instead of uh, Jeff drawing it himself. So maybe we'll get this book, and maybe um, Phantom Road will come back at some point in the future, but... This book is a very strong start, and it's character-driven, which I always love. So if you like those kind of things mixed in with a tarot, um, you know, family dynamic, that sort of story, then definitely, definitely give this a, uh, a look. I don't think you'll be upset at all. All right, and the last book I picked up this week, guys, it was a really light week compared to last week was Transformers issue 13 with this awesome uh, Starscream cover. This is written by Daniel Warren Johnson with art by Jason Howard and colors by Mike Spicer. This is a really interesting take on the history of Starscream and the, and the um, Cybertronian that eventually became Starscream and why he chose the side that he chose. You don't really ever get a lot of backstory about why Starscream is the way that he is, but you get a ton of that history here. And it doesn't feel like it's trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just letting you know important plot points that you might have never known. And that's what I really like about Daniel Warren Johnson's Transformers is you get to see the history of Cybertron, and you get to see the history of these characters. And what more could you ask for than that? Because these characters, like G.I. Joe, have been around for so long that you just don't really think there's a lot else that can be done with them. But I promise you would be totally, totally surprised to find out how deep these characters are and how much their lives matter you know, to them, if they don't matter to you, they they have lives and they have backstories and they have motivations for the things that, you know, that they do and the factions that they have joined. A lot of people don't think that the Transformers or G.I. Joe or Mask or Thundercats have a lot of legs behind them because they feel that Transformers was just a show created to sell toys but when you get somebody like Daniel Warren Johnson here that really loves the characters, then you have a chance for growth. And that's really what everybody's looking for as far as I know. When you read, you're looking for these characters to breathe and live and grow and walk and, you know, murder or be happy. You want to see something that you haven't seen before. And Transformers 13 definitely, definitely delivers. So, Daniel Warren Johnson, if you have not seen any of my videos, if you have not seen any of the uh, reviews that I've given to this book, I hope that you catch this one. And I want to say thank you for the 13 issues that you've done so far. And I really hope that you get to come back and draw at least the last issue that you're going to do because I want you to be able to fully express yourself in this world one more time, just in case you don't get the opportunity to do that again. All right, guys, that is it for this week. It was a small run, 
And like I said, I'm going to talk about Absolute Batman in the um, initial assessment video, which is also coming up very soon. What did you guys pick up at the shop? What are you reading? What are you enjoying? What is your guilty pleasure that you haven't commented on down in the uh, comments section below these videos? I want you guys to start this um, conversation. I want this to be so much more than just me spouting off what I buy every week. I want us to really dig into these things. Uh, by the way, Bama Mouse, where are you? I haven't seen your comments on the video in a couple of weeks, so hit me up on the uh, comments down below. Let me know how things are going for you. And uh, thanks, guys, for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Keep this channel growing, and we'll catch you in the next video.